Uh, my name is Gareth Bell Jones. Uh, I'm the curator and director of Flat Time House. For those of you coming here for the first time, this is the home of the conceptual artist John Latham, and it's been running as an art space since 2008. Um, I'm absolutely delighted that Flat Time House can host William Blake for this exhibition and bring him back to Peckham um, in dialogue with Latham and with contemporary poets. It's been a incredibly exciting project to work on and I'm so delighted that we finally made it happen and I particularly want to thank well it's been a real pleasure to work with the Stennis Mahon Foundation that have made this project possible um, in particular I'd like to thank the trustees Orietta Benucci Adam Suzanne Marriott and Alan Bryant it's uh, because of them They've given us this opportunity to bring Blake back to Peckham by their hugely generous support of this project. I'd also like to thank the co-curators. Firstly, Chris McCabe, whose expertise and curious mind has brought an intuitive consideration of Blake and Latham, which revealed so many overlaps and crossovers in their thinking. Secondly, I'd like to thank Magnus Rayner, whose scholarly attention to detail and cross analysis of Blake works has been so valuable to the project. I'd also like to thank each of the poets who have been so fantastic for this project and really um, revealed things that we couldn't originally see in their works and brought new ideas from, from Blake and Latham and from this space. And that's Keith Jarrett, Chris McKay, Niall McDevitt, Robert Montgomery, Karen Sandu, Ian Sinclair and Tamar Yoselov. As part of the show, we've also produced this really nice publication. Um, so this has essays from Chris McKay, Magnus Rayner, and also the, each of the poet's contributions. So if you'd like to get one of these, these are available to buy. Um, or if you're really nice, I might give you one. Um, and for that, and for this, it's been, it's been a real pleasure working with Matthias Clotto and Ariana Tilchi of Studio Matthew, Matthew Clotto. Um, they did a really fantastic job putting that together and also on the exhibition design. Also, I'd like to thank Philip Surrey for his sign painting. And finally, bring to attention uh, the three events that we have coming up as part of this show because it's very important Flat Time House is a space in time and so it's important that we activate these works and activate the contributions and so there are going to be three evenings of recitals by the uh, poets who are contributing to the show. Um, on the, the 19th of February we'll have Chris McCabe, Niall McDevitt, Karen Sandu and Ian Sinclair and on the 26th of February uh, Keith Jarrett, Chris McCabe, Robert Montgomery and Tamar Yoselov. And on the 23rd of February, there's also going to be a walk of Peckham inspired by William Blake. So, um, with all of the thanks dealt with, um, I'd now like to hand over to um, the two of the co-curators and also potentially uh, Barbara Stavini, who may want to say a couple of words. Um, so first of all, I'm going to hand over to Magnus Rayner. Thanks, Gareth. My involvement with this show is in many ways on behalf of the Sir Dennis Mark Foundation. Uh, they lent both of these works, The Bars and The Fatal Sisters, and have been extremely generous and supportive in ensuring this show gets put on. Mm. Sir Dennis was a truly great art historian and collector. He was born in 1910 and he lived through virtually all of the 20th century. And the foundation was set up in his life to ensure that his legacy, his, his legacy of, of being a great curator or, or of, of being extremely generous and supportive and a significant art historian and a philanthropic person in the 20th century and promotion of young scholars uh, and an art historian. So this exhibition, The Bard, is the most recent in a string of collaborations between the Sir Dennis Mann Foundation and Flat Time House. And We'd like to thank, I think, the Foundation for ensuring this opportunity goes ahead to situate these works here. And I'd also like to thank the poets for offering 
a really stimulating response to this dialogue between Blake and Lathan. And thank you all for coming. And now I'll hand over to Chris and to William Blake. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, real pleasure to be part of this. Um, I spent a year of my life walking through Peckham trying to find the tree that William Blake saw his angel in. Um, I believe it's a hawthorn. It might still exist. I wrote about it in a, a book called Cenotaph South. Um, and Blake, I'd say, along with James Joyce, uh, has been the poet I've spoke back to most. I think he invites that. Um, so, you know, it's been just an amazing kind of summation of all that uh, thinking about Blake and um, mapping out of Blake to be invited into this space in Peckham. There's some amazing archive gallery and group of people that work here um, to kind of make it real it makes all the, all the thinking about Blake real a lot of people carry Blake around with them but to have Blake on the wall in this space in Peckham um, so I just feel so right um, the fact so many of you have come along I think proves that um, the one thing I really wanted to do and the thing that I've enjoyed most is um, is running with the idea of, of filling the space with poetry um, we've got poetry on the walls, we've got poetry in the publication, we've got poetry in these events that are going to happen through through February. Um, and Flat Time House should be so open to, you know, to this idea, let's fill the space with contemporary poetry. Um, and the poets that are selected to come in and be part of it are all poets who, you know, coming in uh, at the world from an angle, like Blake did. There's somewhere out there on the plane with Blake, whether that, that's through the visual work, through the performance element, um, they're all kind of akin to, to the spirit of Blake in some way. Um, and I can't thank them enough for um, creating the work you can see in the space in what was really a very short amount of time. Um, a lot of poets would be fearful of, of writing something new to be displayed in a matter of weeks, but each of the poets uh, have responded to that. They've given us something that just fits the space. Uh, and what you can see is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, we can only show a section from each of what the poets have created, but the performances will will be the full thing. So that there's loads more poetry to come. Um, the purpose of me speaking, really, apart from saying that, is that I want to bring Blake's words into the exhibition. Um, of course, Blake is here. There's visual languages all over the walls, um, and it is truly Blake's work. This, I think, he had you know some really torrid times being commissioned uh, as, as a poet and artist um, but in these grey Thomas Grey works Blake's in his elements he's responding to a poet that he admired um, he's been given free reign to, to create the work that he wants to create and it absolutely comes through through the works um, and I actually think you know the, the, these commissions um, influence Blake, uh, Blake's epic work, there's visionary work that he went on to create, you can see that visually, you can see that in the kind of symbolism that, that's in these poems, and re repeats and returns in, in Milton and in, in Jerusalem. Um, so it's just wonderful to, to see the works in, the, in this amazing space, so beautifully curated and presented. Um, so I can't thank Gareth and Mary enough, Flat Time House, it's been wonderful working with you all, and Magnus as well. Um, I'm going to read... Um, some sections from Jerusalem. Um, it's Blake's most epic work. It's a hundred pages, um, the biggest book he created physically. Uh, I'm not going to read it all, um, <laughs> but you know the, the the good thing is you know Jerusalem is so kind of fractured and non chronological. It allows you to pull things out and to uh, and to and to put them back together. Um, it's a it's a, a kind of a crack, uh, what do I want to say, batshit crazy poem for those of you who know it. It's, um, it's completely unexpected, it's full of weird and wonderful things. Um, for those of you who don't know it, Jerusalem um, is Albion's emanation, better self. Uh, Albion is Britain, but also a kind of divine, cosmic, uh, human person. Um, and Albion is split from Jerusalem. Um, and in the poem, Albion just kind of shrinks in to himself. Uh, God becomes distant figure, uh, separated um, from humanity. 
and humanity itself becomes quite material and quite quite closed and quite blinkered. And Blake's aim here is to open our eyes in, in all of his work, but in Jerusalem, it's to, it's to wake us up to what's happening, to to encourage us to see for ourselves. I think that's a wonderful connection with John Latham is to like think for yourself and see for yourself. Um, so. Blake, as always, mixes mythology and he, with real <coughs> events and with real people. Um, in the bit I'll read, he, mention, he mentions Odenaden, um, which is the lakes of the unborn out of the, on the east of London. Um, it's part of Entuthon Bedathon, which is a forest, but also the frame of mankind. I told you it was batshit crazy. Um, Blake was trialled for sedition um, just a few years before he started writing <laughs> Jerusalem. And um, he mentions in this poem, this section I'll read, some of the judges who trialled him, they, along with some invented people and made up people, uh, but Peachy and, and Brereton, they are real judges who, you know, they could have decided to um, literally have Blake's head off, um, but he was acquitted. Um, but in his mytho mythological work, all this injustice comes to the surface. Uh, he fuses biblical names with invented names, uh, mentions Bular, which is the subconscious, which is where poetry comes from, and he talks of generation, which is the act of true love, which is the easiest way into eternity, <coughs> through generation, through true love. Um, and quite importantly, he mentions the Surrey Hills, and Blake never mentioned Peckham by name in any of his poems, but he talks about <coughs> the Surrey Hills a lot, and when he talks about the Surrey Hills, he means where we are, he means Peckham, he means Croydon, you, you know, he walked all these, all these places that we know in contemporary London. Um, and the two, the, it starts off um, with this incredible moment in Jerusalem where Blake speaks in his own voice. I think it's the closest we get to Blake as an artist in the process of creation. Uh, so amidst all the mythology, we have Blake as a creator talking to us. Um, and then it ends with his figure Los, the poet figure, building Golganuza, uh, the visionary city of London, um, which is the, it's the kind of character or uh, emanation or Zoe that Blake identified with the most. Most Los is the poet who, who bangs the anvil. The banks of the Thames are clouded. The ancient porches of Albion are darkened. They are drawn through unbounded space, scattered upon the void in incoherent despair. Cambridge and Oxford and London are driven among the starry wheels, rent away and dissipated in chasms and abysses of sorrow, enlarged without dimension, terrible. Albion's mountains run with blood, the cries of war and of tumult resound into the unbounded night. Every human perfection of mountain and river and city are small and withered and darkened. Cam is a little stream, Ely is almost swallowed up. Lincoln and Norwich stand trembling on the brink of Udenaden. Wales and Scotland shrink themselves to the west and to the north, mourning for fear of the warriors in the vale of Entuthon Benethon. Jerusalem is scattered abroad like a cloud of smoke through non entity. Moab and Ammon and Amalek and Canaan and Egypt and Aram receive her little ones for sacrifices and the delights of cruelty. Trembling, I sit day and night. My friends are astonished at me, yet they forgive my wanderings. I rest not from my great task to open the eternal worlds, to open the immortal eyes of man inwards into the worlds of thought, into eternity ever expanding in the bosom of God. The human imagination, O Saviour, pour upon me thy spirit of meekness and love, Annihilate the selfhood in me, be thou all my life. Guide thou my hand, which trembles exceedingly upon the rock of ages, while I write of the building of Golganuza and of the terrors of Entuthon. 
of Hand and Hyle and Colbin of Quantock, Peachy, Brereton, Slade and Hutton, of the terrible sons and daughters of Albion and their generations. I behold London, a human awful wonder of God. He says, return Albion, return. I give myself for thee, my streets are my ideas of imagination. Awake Albion, awake, and let us awake up together. My houses of thoughts, my inhabitants, affections, <clears throat> the children of my thoughts walking within my blood vessels, shut from my nervous form, which sleeps upon the verge of Bular in dreams of darkness, while my vegetating blood in veiny pipes rolls dreadful through the furnaces of Los and the mills of Satan. For Albion's sake and for Jerusalem thy emanation I give myself, and these my brethren give themselves for Albion. So spoke London, a mortal guardian, I heard in Lambeth's shades, in Feltham, I heard and saw the visions of Albion. I write in South Malton Street what I both see and hear in regions of humanity, in London's opening streets. Here, on the banks of the Thames, low builded Golganuza, outside of the gates of the human heart, beneath Bular, in the midst of the rocks of the altars of Albion. In fears he builded it, in rage and in fury. It is the spiritual fourfold London, continually building and continually decaying, desolate. In eternal labours, loud the furnaces and loud the anvils of death, thunder incessant around the flaming couches of the 24 friends of Albion and round the awful four for the protection of the 12 emanations of Albion sons, the mystic union of the emanation in the Lord, because man divided from his emanation is a dark spectre. His emanation is an ever weeping melancholy shadow, but she is made receptive of generation through mercy in the potter's furnace, among the funeral urns of Bular, from Surrey hills through Italy and Greece to Hinnom's Vale. In great eternity, every particular form gives forth or emanates its own peculiar light, and the form is the divine vision, and the light is his garment. This is Jerusalem. In every man, a tent and tabernacle of mutual forgiveness, male and female clothings. And Jerusalem is called Liberty among the children of Albion. I mean, that was incredible. Thank you, Chris. That was fantastic. Um, and yeah, just to reiterate how much of a pleasure it's been working with you, because um, when we first, when the first, when the opportunity first aro arose to to show Blake here, it felt like the the natural um, way to progress would be through the words mm -hmm. and through literature. And so, to have someone who is so in tune with William Blake's poetry and able to to communicate it so clearly uh, has been a, a, an absolute pleasure. So thank you, thank you so much. Um,